This is the story of the police car and the speeder. This is a great example type of question that I like to use because it allows us to look at a whole bunch of different solutions to the same problem. And this is more or less exploration and study and learning rather than just solving a problem. Police car and speeder. Okay, so the point of this is to explore the options available and to get our brains into the habit of thinking along these lines. Because that's really what physics is all about. The hardest part of physics is training your brain to think of ideas and not just read a question and get an answer. So, let's begin by describing the situation. It's relatively simple. It begins with a, a speeding car. We're going to call the speeder from here on in. And uh, I'm going to put little lines behind him because he's moving very fast. He's moving this way very quickly. And it so happens that the speeder doesn't notice as he blows by this part of the road that there is a police car waiting, stopped by the side of the road for him. So we'll make our sort of black and white police car here. And we will, uh, let's put a P for police. There we go, Mr. Police Car. As soon as this car blows by, Mr. Police Car turns on his lights and chases him to come to a stop. Okay? So, um, if I were to draw two lines to show them what would happen here, the police car is stopped and the speeder is actually moving very fast. So the speeder blows by and then the police car speeds up and catches him, something like that. Oh, that didn't work at all. Let me try that one more time. I think my shirt got in the way. So let's try this again. All right. Something like that. So the police car at first is going slowly, but he speeds up and eventually catches up with the speeding car. So they catch over here. There's the spot where the police car finally catches up with him. And, of course, the question we're going to ask is, when will the police car catch him? How long will it take? How many seconds? When will the police car catch the speeder? Now, I'm going to give you some more information. But I'm going to do it in the form of a graph rather than words. Because it's a lot easier to do it that way. So there's our initial question. And here is the graph that we will draw that goes with it. We draw a VT graph, velocity and time. And we will draw the speeder in red right here, traveling at a constant speed. That's important. He's not actually changing his speed. And we're going to say that he's going 30 meters per second as he flies by the police car. right? And then the police car starts at a speed of zero down here on the graph. And he is going to accelerate continuously until he catches up with the speeder. So his graph looks like a curve, or a, sorry, a slope. It's, a, it's an acceleration. And it's a constant acceleration. So those are the parameters of, of how this is going to happen. I'm also going to give you one other bit of information. I'm going to tell you on the graph that this particular point happens to be six seconds. But what that means, I'm going to leave up to you to decide. Okay, so there you go. That's the question. That's the scenario. Somehow we have to determine how long it's going to take for this police guard to catch up to this speeder. And that's all the information we have. So, the first thing we do is go back to our situation up here. Look at the picture or the graph and try to think about a starting point for what we can do to get to a solution. Don't think about the answer. Don't think about trying to get the answer. Just think about what does the police car and the speeder have in common? If they have something in common, that would create a good starting point for us to begin. So what's the same or what's in common or what can be related? It looks to me, if I look at the picture, that if the police car and the speeder are both starting here at our position, A, the beginning of our scenario, and they both end up over here, even though they go at different rates, they still have covered the same amount of distance. This distance, which we could call the distance for the speeder, is exactly the same as this distance, which is the distance 
for the police car or the displacement. I guess we could consider this to be displacement if we wanted to be more accurate. So they're the same, aren't they? And that's our key point. That's really one of the hardest parts of this question is just to realize that in this scenario, those two things will be the same. So we're going to start by writing that sort of like our opening sentence. The displacement of the police car is going to be equal to the displacement of the speeder. And that's how we'll begin. Now once we get that far, it's probably a good idea to try to pull out of the graph as much information as we can so we know what we have to work with. So now we'll look at the graph more closely. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to write information about the speeder over here on this side, speeder. And I'm going to write information about the police car over here on this side. And then we're going to see how that information can be used to, to sort of flesh out this little thesis statement that we've discovered about the distances being the same. So the, the speeder is the easiest guy because he's not accelerating. So he has a speed, V. I'll call it Vs for speeder. And it's 30 meters per second. So that's very helpful. Now there will also be a certain amount of time involved. Now that I don't know. So I'll put T here for the speeder, and I'll just leave it empty for a second. Then there will also be a displacement for the speeder, and again, I don't know what that is. I'll put a question mark for that. Now let's go back to the police car. Well, the police car has an initial speed, V1. On the graph, I can see that it's zero. So that's helpful. Because the graph is sloped, there is an acceleration. Nothing in the question tells me that the acceleration has a number, but if I look closely at the graph and I remember that acceleration is slope on a VT graph, because I studied, so I know that, I can look at this graph and I can say, hey, I can get the slope of the green line if I look at this triangle right here. Because there's a rise of 30 and a run of 6. So I can figure out the acceleration. It'll be rise over run, 30 over 6, which is equal to 5. And of course, that would be meters per second squared. So I actually have an A, even though it didn't specifically say that. So now I'm just going to erase that. Oops, that's too big. I'm going to erase this black triangle because it'll get confusing. We're done with that now. And I'll redraw our lines that got messed up. Okay. So now we'll go back to our simpler picture. And I'll erase that little guy too. Okay. So we figured out a slope using that little triangle. That's why that 6 was there on the time scale. That 6 turned out to be important. Now what else do I know about Mr. Police Car? Well, there is going to be a V2. Obviously, if you're accelerating, there has to be a V2. Um, I don't know what that is. So I'll just put V2 question mark. And there will also be a displacement for him, which will be displacement of the police car, which I don't know. And there will be a time for the police car, which again, I don't know. But this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to look at my picture again. And I'm going to try to figure out, or at least make a decent guess as to what might happen. So now I want you to look at the first part of this scenario. The first half. We'll use the, the uh, 6 as the halfway point, sort of. I'm not saying that that's halfway or anything. It's just on the graph it looks sort of the middle. The first thing you might think is, well, this could be the spot where they meet because the lines are touching. But this is a VT graph. So V means speed. That's the point where they have the same velocity, not the point where they are actually in the same place. In fact, if you think about it, for this entire part of the trip, the police car is going slower than the speeder. So he can't possibly catch the speeder at six seconds. He's been going slower that whole time. And it's only at that point where he gets up to 30 meters per second. But you can imagine, because he's been going slower, he'll be way behind still at this point. So we know that he cannot catch the speeder in this first part of the graph. And he doesn't catch the speeder at six seconds, so he must catch the speeder somewhere on the other side of the graph, over here. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to pick an arbitrary time in that region. We're going to make a sort of a guess and say, I think this will be the time that he will catch him. And we're going to call it t because we don't know what it is. Now our guess could be right, could be wrong, but as long as we don't put a number, if we just call it t, then it's free to be any number it wants. And we'll let the math tell us what t is actually going to be. But we, can, we need to define that point, though, so we have a spot to work with. So there is going to be the time that he needs. We'll just call it t because we don't know what it is, and we want the math to tell us. That's kind of the answer to our question, isn't it? That will be when he catches the speeder. And then the other thing I can do, I suppose, if I want to, is I can just draw this up here, because that would then tell me what the final speed would be, or at least it would tell me where it would be, for the police car, and this is his V1, right, zero. But I don't have a number for that either. So I think I pulled everything I possibly can off of this graph. But now I'm going to go back to my information here. And you'll notice that because I picked a spot for the meeting to take place, then the time for the speeder is going to be that time, T. And of course, the time for the police car is also T because it's the same time. So I'm setting up an equation that will have this blue T in it, which is the answer to my problem. And I have to figure out how to get it. So the way I go from, uh, the thing I do next, where I go from here, is to look at this information I have and describe the motion using the equations that I am familiar with. The speeder who is moving at a constant speed means, uh, that means he can be described as this. The displacement is the speed of the speeder times the time of the speeder, right? Now, I don't have all the info, but I do know that ds will be equal to 30 times the blue t. I'm going to keep that blue t sort of blue for now so we can see it's our magic answer. I can't solve that equation, but at least I have something that describes the speeder. So now I go over to the police car, and I see that, okay, he's accelerating. So for him, the displacement of the police car is V1t plus a half at squared. That's the formula, or that's the way to describe the displacement of an accelerating object. And if I put in my information, I don't know what dp is, the displacement of the police car, but I know that V1 is a zero, so this first part is gone, zero times t, one half, a, but wait a minute, I thought I figured out A. I did. It's 5. So I can actually put A in there, right here. We figured out that A was actually 5, so let's use that and put 5 in its place. And then I'm left with T squared, but of course, that's our little blue T. That's this magic spot. And it happens to be the same time for both. If you look at the graph, the time at which the police car catches the speeder is the same time for both of them. So it's the same t, and that's kind of critical too. So we've discovered there are two things in common in this situation. They both have the same displacement, which is where we started in black here in the middle, but they also have the same time, which is that little blue t. Okay, well, now what I can do is I can see that the displacement of the speeder is actually equal to 30 times t. So I can write that here for ds. And I can see that the displacement of the police car is actually equal to this 1 half of 5 t squared. So I can write that right up here, which means I can change my thesis statement here of the d d equals ds to this 30 t. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong side. It's the other side. 1 half of 5 t squared, which is actually 2.5 t squared. I'm not going to put the t in blue anymore because we understand it's the same t. And this, of course, is 2.5. So that's what I can write for there. That equals 30t. So I've substituted the expressions I developed for these two d's. Well, now all I have to do is solve this equation, and I can figure out what t is. So the way I solve it is to recognize that it's a quadratic equation. So I'll bring the minus uh, the 30t over to the other side, making it a negative number like that. Subtract 30t from both sides. And now to solve this, I'll have to remember my grade 10 math. 
It's a quadratic equation. So I'll factor out a t first. Because there's only two terms here and there's no third term, this is an easier one to deal with. If I factor out a t, this is what it will become. And you can check that by multiplying the t back into the brackets and you'll see that you get back where you started. Now I have an interesting statement here in math. This is telling me that t right here multiplied by this big chunk of stuff in the brackets has to equal zero. Well, what would make that true? Well, it turns out that if the t happens to be a zero, then it doesn't matter what the brackets are, it'll be zero times whatever, and that will equal zero. So if t is zero, that makes this a true statement, which is makes it a solution to the, the quadratic equation. But there's another option. Or the um, stuff sort of in the brackets right here, what if that turned out to be zero? If all that junk in there actually ended up being zero, then it wouldn't matter what the t was. The t would be multiplied by a zero. So that could also make this a true statement. So I have to look at that option. And of course, if all that stuff in there is going to equal zero, then I can figure out what t would make that work by solving this for t. Whoops, I forgot the t there. 2.5t equals 30. And then t is 30 divided by 2.5. And that, I think, equals 12. So the time is 12 seconds. And of course, that time happens to be the time when we said that they would meet. So we go back up to our graph and we say, well, it's 12 seconds. And if this is 12, it sort of fits. It's in the right spot. Now, my, my line was off a bit. 12 should be exactly twice as much as 6. But you see, that's OK, because I didn't know what that line was. I let it just be anywhere. And the math will correct me. The math says, nice try on the line, but you're a little bit off. It should be more to the right, because the answer is 12. And that's what I wanted. So that's one way to solve this problem. So to recap, the solution was quite complex. We had to first get a picture in our mind of what everything looked like. Then we had to go and look at the graph that was given to us and pull off all the information that we could from the graph. And we had to remember all the things we've learned, like slopes and areas and how to read the graph. And then we had to think about what the two objects had in common and we realized that there were two things in common. One was they had the same displacements, and the other was they had the same time. So we started off with a statement right here that said, well, they have two displacements, so let's go with that. And then we used all of our information to describe those displacements with equations, and lo and behold, out pops the time that we were looking for. So a question like this would be a level three, a very high level three question, or possibly it could even become a level four question if I made a few changes to it. We're going to look at uh, two other ways of solving this problem, or maybe three other ways, but we're going to do them in separate videos. So that's the end of this. Hopefully you can watch that and you can get your mind around all the thoughts that happened while we made this happen. And you'll appreciate that you can't just look at it, write in the numbers, and get an answer. You really have to know your stuff. You have to know all about graphs and slopes and areas and accelerations and velocities. And you have to know about all the rules and all the formulas. And then you build a solution together in this complex way.